Hello, everyone. Welcome to Clickbait, the holiday edition. This is our holiday episode. Um, we're very excited about it. We have Gabby back as the co-host. We are also bringing on one of Bachelor Nation's favorites. Mike Johnson is here. He's going to talk about all things love because he is now, he is a certified, he's a certified intimacy coach. And I believe he's going for a higher certification Certification, so, correct? Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so. Intimacy. Yeah, I can't wait to talk to him. Um, yeah. How is, how is everybody on this lovely, lovely day? I love that we're festive. I know, just to address the elephant, I have here. <laughs> nice. Um, where my boobs should go. <laughs> love the sweater. Just listening, yeah, thank you. Wait, what, what movie is that when like the boobs shoot out? Austin oh. Powers, Machine Gun Jubblies. Yeah, yes, yes. Austin Powers. That, that's, what, that's what it's giving. You're you're yes. shooting out candy canes. Yeah. You're shooting out carrots of love. Yes. Right. <laughs> that's yeah. what it reminds good, me of. They're good weapons. There's yes. no bullets in here. No bullets. No. Yeah. <laughs> Cupid. Ooh, what if it's Cupid? What if you're shooting out arrows well, for people to in fall that in case, love? I mean, you know, <laughs> point it at myself. <laughs> No, you have to point one at yourself and one somewhere. Yeah, and then the other. There we go. A holiday, I am a sharpshooter. A, ho- a holiday fembot. That's one of the funniest <laughs> scenes in Austin Powers. A when that happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So good. Actually, I should watch yeah. that again. I miss. I haven't seen it in a really long time. So yeah. Well, well, what's What's everybody watching? Are we watching holiday Everything. movies yet? White Lotus. Just, yes. I watched White Lotus. I just recently watched The Grinch. Now I'm watching Wednesday. Did you guys watch Wednesday? No. Nope. I watched I watched the first few episodes of Wednesday. Watch Don't White Lotus. Oh, um, you didn't I, want I, to finish it? Wednesday Wednesday's okay. Wednesday's okay. Uh, I'm watching, okay. you know what I'm watching now that I never seen before? Um and I'm really enjoying it is New Girl. Yeah, oh, you mentioned uh, yeah. that. New Girl's mm-hmm. fun. I have to yeah. I have to watch it, but um, were you guys? We're not gonna go crazy into it. We can go into a deep, deep rabbit hole of White Lotus. But were you guys uh, happy about the ending or not? I had mixed feelings. I did, and I watched it like like as it came out. Oh no, spoilers! Mm-hmm. Um, but it was frustrating for me because none of my friends watched it at the same time as me, and I couldn't like I know talk to them. Natasha, we need to exchange numbers because it's yeah. Like, I'm always looking for people to like watch shows with because in real time, I need to like talk mad shit and get my yes. feelings out. Yes, yeah, immediately, immediately. There was this guy I met and yeah. he was like, oh, we should watch the finale together. I was like, uh-huh. He was out of town. My girlfriends were like, you know, we're watching this, right? I'm like, yeah, sorry, boo, we watching it. <laughs> yeah, no, we can't wait. And like big finales like that. Oh my God. I was like, is this how people feel about Bachelorette finale? We should probably get off the White Lotus. Uh, the White oh, Lotus. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna, go forever. We're get off White Lotus, but I will say we don't have to talk, Abby, because girl, yeah, I have should. a theory. I, I have a theory. This is ho- this is how this is holiday edition. Holiday <laughs> okay, edition. Okay, guys, Back sorry. to Christmas. Christmas. Christmas movies only. Okay. Traditions. Um, favorite traditions. Who wants to go first? If any. If you have a tradition. Mm-mm. No? Okay. <laughs> you know what? I I don't think it's really a tradition. I guess maybe we're kind of doing it now. Um I really think the holidays, there's something so I mean, yes, of course being with family is so important, but like if you celebrate Christmas, uh, it's so fun to see kids open gifts. Like as adults, we buy what we want. We, you know, like I'm not like, oh my God, I can't wait for what my dad gets me for Christmas. You know, like, it, yeah. you know, we kind of do that for ourselves already as adults now. So um, my brother, we have to I have three nieces that small nieces that my brother has in LA and they weren't going to come home. And so I'm like, not seeing children open presents just doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. It just doesn't sit right. So we're going to California for Christmas and um, we're going to take my nieces to um, to SeaWorld. And, you know, just like just something for the kids. Your Christmas like, tradition, SeaWorld. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or just like the kids, you know, like seeing like being yeah. with like the, wh- whoever the kids are in the family. It's like seeing them happy for Christmas because it's really, you know, 
that I just feel like that's what it's about. And then my other brother just had a baby as well. And she's one. So, you know, she kind of really doesn't get it yet. But when they're like, you know, five and three, three to, I don't know, 10, they're just like so like Christmas. So that's I guess that's my tradition. Just doing it for the kids. Really. I like that. I, mm-hmm. I like seeing kids opening gifts. Yeah, that's the best. Uh, oh, I would say yes. I just like the build up to Christmas, like like this week and, and, and the week before and just going out and being with friends and, and, and hanging out and just going to different like restaurants and bars and in New York, everything's holiday themed and there's Christmas lights everywhere. Oh, did you see that? What's the name of that bar that in New York that's like a, it's, I think it's a German bar, Natasha, you were talking Rolls. about the other night. Na- Rolls, yeah. we should go. Can we go? We should there go. Is, I, we walked past there. We walked past it the other night. There was a line like yep. for five so, city blocks. Yeah, so that's what I was going to say. So when we go, we either have to go at a time where it's not that cold outside because we're going to be standing outside or we have to go right when it opens, like right at the beginning. So yeah. one of the two. Um, is it Christmas themed? Yes, What's, and it's yeah. beautiful. Oh, it's uh, so beautiful. Yeah. yeah, last time I saw Joe and Serena, we were talking about uh, going there because it really is just like it's so sweet. They have schnitzel and pretzels Yum. and like hot, hot, best hot toddies and like all the Christmassy type fun, hot chocolate, eggnog, all the things. And they're, the whole entire bar is full of ornaments. The whole bar, you like oh the, on the ceiling, on the walls, every, everywhere. And so I normally go once a year with friends, and we kind of go mm-hmm. and you know, yeah. So um, we should definitely go there. Definitely. Yeah, be a lot of fun. Um, okay. What about you, Gabby? Do you have any um, traditions? N- not. I do love to cook. So um, I love like making the menu and just having fun with cooking. So that's what I'm most stoked about. But mm-hmm. also like what you guys are saying, just like gaining the spirit is so fun. And like it only happens once a year. And literally the first time you see a Christmas tree, like, you know, you get happy. So I think it's just cute. Okay. What are you cooking? What's what, what's your favorite? What's your favorite thing you're cooking? Um, well, my dad cooks the meat annoying because he like normally makes it so dry, but we're having, (laughs) um, I can't, we're getting him, he's not going to listen to this so he can say it. We're getting him a thermometer so that he like better cooks his meat for Christmas, you know? (laughs) Um, but besides that, I, uh, everything we're making like, um, this sweet potato kind of like quiche thing, but without the eggs, it's like a sweet potato, not pie because it's savory um mm. and like uh an apple dutch baby which i've never done before i like to cook not bake and just like mac and cheese green beans i like to do it all mm. nice nice so yeah. are, are you inviting Vinny to do- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. really he should invite me home I'm like, yeah he should on. he's got to make the first move i'm good <laughs> with moms <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but literally would die to learn her cooking. Like, come yeah. on. It's not even about Vinny at this point. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, oh gosh. Mm, well, that would be great. Um, best best gift. Ahead. Best gift you've ever received or given. I'll go first. I said. <laughs> the best gift I ever get I ever gave um for Christmas, let's just do it like for, for the holiday season, not just like whenever. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say what I what I got Serena this year for Christmas. I think I did, I think, some of my best work yet. See, Joe always does this to us, uh, Gabby. He always yeah, says you can't he, tell can't, us? he can't tell no, us can't, because Serena listened. What if so she listens? What you got hmm. her last year was pretty great too. Yeah. What'd you get this, her last year? <sighs> What, oh, oh! I got her a nice. I got her. Um, I got her a purse. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Bags. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, got her a bag. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. So, I'm a really great gift giver. I just have to say that. I pretty. I really am. So I can't say what the best thing I've given because I. Always Gabby's, you know, Gabby's new to this podcast. I really actually feel bad for her that she has Why? to listen to us two just talk about how great we are. No, <laughs> I, I love it. Both, I love we're it. both I like, yeah, I'm a no, great say, gift giver. I'm like, I can relate. I, I am I'm a, a good gift giver too. See, see, yeah. Um, I will say received. So my brother, and anytime my brothers get me stuff, um, 
I always really appreciate it because like, the, you know, like guys giving things like it's just they just really think about it. And sometimes they're like, oh, she's not going to like this. My brother got me a necklace one year that I still wear to this day. I get so mm. many compliments on it. Um, and he did real good. And like I just, it, you know, it was it was great. It was great. It, so, yeah, I um, it was a necklace once. My I love my gifts from my brothers. I know my dad would probably listen to this and be like, what about me? But <laughs> it's, you know, my brother. I'm like my dad, of course, he knows me so well. He gets me great gifts as well. But my brothers, when they really put thought in it, I'm like, I love you. Yeah, I love you so that's much. what means the most. It's like if there's thought behind it, then like it doesn't matter what it is. But you know, I'm going to love it because it means you were like thinking about me and had it planned for a while. I think I'm a thoughtful gift giver too. like mm -hmm. my stepmom will listen to this. So I can't say, but she had just mentioned she wanted something and I was like, oh, I'm going to get it. And I bet she's never going to see it coming. Oh, it was just like in passing, you know, yes, yes. But it's like you have to, and I think good gift givers are always listening for their like partner or somebody else to drop a hint. Like you mm -hmm. kind of always have to be like aware of that. But I I also like to give experiences. That's oh yeah, because like I think you're it's an experience fun. giver, huh? I'm an experience you're giver. You're one of those. Okay. I'm one of those. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, the experience you're giving us with this shirt. <laughs> exactly. yeah. I like to get fun <laughs> and excitement. I'm so always dropping hints to to Serena. I always drop hints what I want, and then I don't know if she's actually paying attention. So I'll be like, well, okay, like I'll pull it up on the computer and be like, this is what I want. Oh, yeah. Exactly Tell that. her specifically. Yeah. 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 Okay. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Okay. Good. I love that. She's not going to listen to me, though. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's just so it's so nice having you here, Gabby, because, you know, you are a fellow single lady, you know. Mm, um, yes. And so our listeners are getting double double single lady time. Oh, us, oh, hell yeah. You know? Yeah. They're like not tuning in this week. This is too much. <laughs> no, no. I think I mean, I would go on a limb and say most of our listeners are probably single. Yeah, that's just I a even, wild guess. That's a wild guess. It's a wild guess. But but yeah. if they're not, they have dated until they found their man or and or right. woman. So it's something um, that everyone's experienced. I feel mm -hmm. like it's like relatable to talk about. Exactly. So with our clickbait, darling, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this week, uh, our clickbait, we're talking about, we love talking about dating trends in clickbait. And there, for whatever season, there's always a dating trend. And this season, it is snow globing, the worst holiday dating trend ever. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, what snow globing is, is the holidays come around and guys or girls or people, they get a little lonely. <laughs> they get lonely and uh, they say, oh, I want to spend New Year's with someone. Uh, I'm guilty of that. Uh, I want to spend yeah. Christmas and, you know, maybe I've been talking to this guy for a while and I don't really see it going anywhere. But maybe he can come see my family and maybe my family will love him and then I'll love him even more. I don't know. Mm. So... Snow globing is when you the holidays come around and you say, I want to hang out with you and be with you. And the moment the holidays are over, you're like, yeah, the spark is over. It's done. I got my Christmas gifts. I got my holiday, my, my mm -hmm. New Year's trip. And now goodbye. I don't like you. Yeah. It's it kind of, I know. It's like it kind of makes sense. I feel like it goes in hand with almost like cuffing season, which I think is a little different. It's more like um I don't know what he, not prehistoric or it reminds me of bears. Like we want to hibernate in the yes. winter and yes. it's better to do it with somebody else. But I guess I would, I'm the opposite of snow globing and that like, if I'm seeing someone and it's not serious before the holidays, I'll ditch their ass so fast because that's like, not for me. I want to spend time alone with my family and I don't like to share them with people unless I know they're going to be around forever. Yeah, See, I agree. Like, I agree with I agree with that. Like I would do the opposite. If I was single, I would do the opposite of snow globing. Like I would be like, no, no, thank you. OK, so I just came up with a dating trend for that um, or a name for that snow blowing. You are Hello? blowing them away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that good? Or yeah. Snow plowing? I don't know. I guess that I could also be I think sounds... all these things you could probably search in a porn search engine and, and see some real, real crazy did, shit. Not that. I didn't know we were going to go there, but we did. <laughs> this is why we have Joe, yeah. our our lovely guy on the podcast. Sorry, we don't think like that all the time, Joe. That's not yeah. where we where our brains yeah. are. So that's Blow. not what I was thinking. That's not what, yeah, blowing. Okay, that's no. not what I was thinking. Mm -mm. Yeah, no. 
<laughs> Look at Gabby's sweater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fresh on the mind. They're real. <laughs> okay, so with that said, um, I would say that I've never done that with Christmas, but I have, and I'm just <laughs> got to be honest with you guys because that's what we do here. I've definitely been like, I want to be with someone for New Year. I don't agree. Like, I know this is not going to go anywhere, but like, uh, let's go somewhere fun. <laughs> let's have oh, a good don't, time. Totally. Let's have the New Year's yeah. kiss. <laughs> let's go for it. You know, I need so a I've, New Year's kiss. Yeah. yeah, I've definitely done that before, but not for Christmas. I feel like Christmas is like I said, it's very much for the babies. It's for the fam. It's for that. Uh, and if a guy invites me over for Christmas, I'm like, clearly he's proposing in front of my whole entire family or his <laughs> entire family. Like, clearly there's a ring and we just have <laughs> fine. <laughs> like, that's what I think, right? Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, do you think – or so, has this ever happened to you the other way where someone has been like, come over, let's hang out, and you're like, huh? No, normally never no, – no one wants to date me ever. Oh, stop <laughs> it, Gabby. Stop it, Gabby. Like, let me call Vinny real quick. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah. Honestly, uh, and our next guest, Vinny. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. He's like at the gym. He's like keto guido jumping rope. <laughs> I'm like, that's my man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like, uh, I bought you some jump ropes for Christmas, Gabby. Come join me. Yeah. <laughs> right? No, okay. right. No, that's never happened to me, though. But now I'm going to be like hyper aware of it. Yeah. So for our listeners, if this has happened to you, can you let us know? Because um, yeah. it's never happened to me either. But the New Year thing has happened, not the Christmas thing or mm -hmm. Hanukkah or anything that you celebrate during the holidays. Only New Year. So let us know if this has happened yeah. to you because I want to hear the story. <laughs> All right. Well, I think it's per I think it's a perfect time to we could even talk to our guest about this because he's an expert in the dating world. Everyone, please welcome Mike Johnson to the podcast. Michael. Hi, Mike. What's Damn, up? Michael. 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 Good times. What's up? <laughs> What's Joseph? up, Mike? How you doing? <laughs> I'm good, homie. How are you? How are y'all? good. We're so good. Happy to see you. Good. Love that you're being festive with us. Your yeah. stocking. Wait, is your, is your name on your stocking? No, nah, it's not. I have another stocking, too, but I try to put it on, but my head too big. I try to be <laughs> you know, a bit more festive. I got a big ass head, though. Oh, well, it's okay. You, the green is good. The green is good. Uh, how have you been? How is everything? Tell us. Yeah, what's, what's new? Uh, what's new? Working on my uh, the, my biggest legacy that I leave, feeling seen. My newsletter coming out soon. Uh, I taught my little my mentee, the kid that I mentor, Big Brother Big Sister. I taught him how to drive this past week. Uh, uh, yeah, just have fun. Mike, 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 Mike. Listen, we're gonna get into all that, but what else <laughs> happened? Because I know you mentioned some before the podcast. So let's talk about it. What went down? What? You know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, 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 you know what oh, I'm talking oh. about. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about, bro? <laughs> no. That's like, what you know, something like. What with Joe? What <laughs> went down, he said. What went down? I wish down? I did I have, have something on you like that. That would be funny. Yeah, because yeah. then you would have me like, hold up. What is Joe now? <laughs> no, but I was telling Joe, I was telling you that I yesterday got, like, I was under a spell, I guess you would say, like hypnotized a bit. Or is, okay. it, is, it, is it hypnosis? Like, I wasn't doing nothing crazy. We just... What is it called when you hypnotherapy? When you did go it deeper actually, into yourself, did it, did it actually work? Um, I don't if know how to define. Happened, if it just happened what, yesterday, it's probably still happening. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. Possibly, I, I don't know necessarily what work means in this sense because my outcome that I desired was just to go into a different state, and that I mean, you know, I, I was at I was at peace and I was calm, so that was dope. Okay. So, uh, so it wasn't a meditation. It was actually a hypnosis. Because normally when no, you... No, it was meditation. Okay. Because normally okay. when you do a hypnosis or you're doing hypnotherapy, you're normally trying to hypnotize someone to replace something. So some people do it for like if they're big smokers, if they can't stop smoking cigarettes, they'll get hypnotized oh. and replace that craving with something else. Um, some people, I if they you. take it over an X, they'll do that. You know, they'll... they'll replace that feeling with something else. So hypnotherapy is a very amazing tool. Um, and I think that it's really great. But I do think that if you just wanted to go into a calmer state and kind of resonate that over your week or whatever, that might have been more of meditation, aka what I teach. Um, and I saw your story and you posted about it and you were like saying something. Um, yeah. Like during it, as you were laying down. Well, 
because she, she was asking questions, mm-hmm. and then I would just respond with, you know, that whatever state I was at with my response. Mm-hmm. And so okay. I, what I what did I say? I said I think the, the quicker that you can uh, forgo people that don't truly know you in the vision of you, the, the quicker you'll be happier. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like but, almost like a mantra. Yeah. Do you say that over and out. over? Mm. No, I was just responding oh, to the question. Just it just came out. So the question. Oh, got but, it. So, but when you went to sit with her, did you say, I'm feeling like this and I don't want to feel like this, so hypnotize me so I don't feel like this anymore? Or it no. was just like, how did it start? No, it was just uh, lay down, you know, eye coverings. Uh, she felt my energy and then went into there to like a question and answer type thing. It could have also been Reiki. Mm-hmm. She could have been performing Reiki on you, which is an energy healing as well. Oh, that's Damn, cool. I'm going to go call her. Yeah, <laughs> you, you got to call, call her. You got to call her and see what she's certified in for sure. I'm actually getting my Reiki certification. Did you uh, Did you guys, you, hook, did you guys hook up after? Fuck no. <laughs> I've said uh, Joe's voice is hit to a uh, new level. Oh, okay. That's why I love you, bro. Uh, oh, my no, God. No, not at all. How not long all. did it take? Uh, this was a short one. It was condensed, so it was like only 90 minutes. Okay. Yeah, it can take, I was told it could take between one and three hours. I guess it was the average time. time. Mm. I feel like it might have been Reiki. I, I, I'm going cool. to text her after this. I got yeah. you. I'm going right. to text you and text her. Well, I actually, yes. oh, I, I really wanted to get into scene, uh, feeling scene and all, because uh, your videos look great. On, you're shooting them like really high quality and you're doing a great job. Um, before we get into that, though, should we do an extra clickbait? Because you are, you know, you're a professional. I'm not a professional, uh, but let's do a clickbait. Right. You are professional when it comes to dating intimacy, right? Like, Oh, when it comes to that, yeah, for sure, I got you. Yeah, so we did a clickbait mm-hmm. earlier, and we were talking about a new dating term called snow globing, and we actually have another clickbait that we wanted to do with you because of your expertise. We wanted to know what you thought about this. I saw a post on Instagram, and I'm going to read it for you guys. Uh, it says, healthy relationships often feel boring when... You do not have time to work and fight to be seen. It feels unnatural. It is not that your partner is boring. You are not used to available partners. Get used to it and know the difference. What do you think about that, Mike? Um, And of course, we're going to ask Joe and Gabby as well. But what do you think about people feeling like and i've been in this situation i think a lot of people have you meet someone things are going so great and you almost have this fear like what's wrong when is something going to happen okay nothing's happening i don't feel the spark what do you think about that um i think it's just people myself included has has felt this we become comfortable in the discomfort and so therefore when we actually do have comfort it's chaos in our mind from time to time because we're not accustomed to that Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's just going to simply take that individual to do the work. And there's a sign, there's things that we have uh, when people sign up for feelingscene.com that covers things like this. An actual assignment, it's like basically free sex therapy um, that can help with that person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so there's tangible stuff that would need to be done as well. But I would say that's the exact reason right there. Mm-hmm. And what about you, Gabby? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, we were kind of talking earlier. My initial thought was like, I feel like. Um, the message or quote didn't specify when you're having these feelings because I think it could also relate to attachment styles like if you're not feeling the chaos in the beginning you feel like it's not worth it because if that person has like an anxious attachment style then you do always want the chaos because you don't know how to be loved any other way but I feel like later on in the relationship if you feel like it's boring it could be (laughs) you know like there's also not everything's black and white there's a lot of gray um so I think it also is a like you said you kind of have to do the work and know yourself enough to know which one's which because I've definitely had both I've been you know the person who like needs the chase in the beginning and I have to win them over in order to feel any kind of reward or intimacy and recently I've had the latter where there was no work you know to be done we just accepted each other um, and it didn't feel any less satisfying for me So I think also like you also have to weigh your partner and that, you know, sometimes in the beginning, you're not always weighing like, do we have common interests or is this actually going to be able to satisfy me long term? Because I think relationships can get boring and then you have to reassess. Definitely can get boring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I think that it could be both. Like it doesn't always mean that you have to be in a boring relationship and that there's something wrong with you. Or it's just a low that you're going through. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And also communicating what you need if something has died or not, or if something was a certain way in the beginning and now you guys have fell into this routine. Right. Um, Boundaries. Yeah. Joe, what do you think? I think life could be boring, so deal with it. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, all right, so there's totally. two, well, think about it, right? There's right. 24 hours in a day. There's seven days a week. You know, that's a lot of that's a lot of living we're doing, and a, a portion of that's going to be boring. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and if if you feel like your relationship's boring, maybe it's you, and maybe you should spice things up. Yeah, boring. absolutely. Yeah, but I, don't know. I, I will say that. I will say uh, when it comes to the beginning of a relationship and you meet someone and, you know, they have this saying about nice guys finishing last and all these different things. I do think that um, I believe, Mike, you mentioned doing the work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we are used to these toxic relationships, it's a toxic relationship. The definition of it is normally up, down, up, down. When it's great, it's really great. When it's bad, it's super bad. And so you have this fluctuating feelings all the time. And so when you get used to these fluctuating feelings and you get to a point where you meet someone and it's very even, it's very secure, it's very uh, grounding and that can be like, wait, what's happening? This is not how, you know, I was crazy about this guy because this guy drove me crazy, right? <laughs> like, it's just like, it's a, it's a different thing. So in doing the work, it's having those self affirmations. It's telling yourself what you really deserve. It's, le- it's being real honest with yourself and being like, this person won't even call me back. Do I really want to marry and have kids with someone who Hell is no. so unreliable? I deserve a reliable partner. I was, you know, and when I started being like, I want a reliable person in my life. That's when I started dating different men. That's, you know, that, that's what I'll say. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think all of those things being reliable is not boring. It's security. Right. And I think everybody has to get to that point of getting away from this unattainable thing and capturing this unattainable thing. And then be it a guy or a girl or whoever you're dating. Uh, and then we get to, what we deserve and i think everyone deserves a healthy relationship and if you are feeling bored go bungee jumping skydiving <laughs> i was gonna say you know, go some, some thrills together you know yeah. uh yeah so that was a post by uh back to love doc uh so thank you for for that but um and and mike with your intimacy do you find with working with different people and talking to different people when you there's an issue but before 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 you go natasha oh. i just want for our listeners mike what certifications do you have oh bro i ain't gonna front i was not expecting to come on here and talk about this stuff at all <laughs> oh really do you not uh, want to talk about it no we absolutely can't okay. yeah. i was just y'all just a homie so i'm like i'm gonna talk about whatever comes up yeah um as of right now joe i'm just certified in uh I'm just certified sex coach. Been certified for a few years now. Um, I December next year though, I'll be a board certified sexologist. I'll be a practi- practitioner of natural healing, and I'll be a practitioner of tantra. Uh, okay. And that's over 1,500 hours that I got to do for, just for this part, not including what I've done over the last few years. And okay. Yeah. Cool. So, do you find a you know, in relationships, they say most people get a divorce because it's finances, sex, or, you know, there's all these different things, uh, main things that is uh, kind of stereotypical. You know, people get divorced over finances, people get divorced over uh, sexual differences. Those are like two big major things, right? Do you find when you have people and you people come to you with intimacy issues, is there common things or like a, a more yes. common thing that people... Uh, come to you about and what is that yes 100% um, it's, I think that this is gonna I'm gonna lose a lot of people with saying this but this is what the data that I have has, has shown when it comes to a, the person who has more of a feminine energy and the person who has more of a masculine energy normally it's the person with the feminine energy that almost when they come towards me seems to that's their avenue of trying hard uh, for the relationship because of communication issues. That communication is normally, 
I ha- I have or my partner has libido issues, um, that communication is normally how do I set boundaries and that communication um, is, is just communication and communication within a bunch of subtitles underneath that. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I think that's a, I think that's a big thing. And it's basically not knowing how to communicate the issues or problems that they have with their partner in a, in a proper way, or they're yeah, just afraid to. No, it's not that they're afraid to, it's that they want to, they just want to be respectful to their partner because a lot of us are, um, when we get, we get defensive. Yes. And so when you really care about your partner, you want to say, hey, I hear everybody talking about, I hear clickbait, you know, everybody else on the internet talking about, I need to convey, I need to communicate. But how the F do you communicate without being disrespectful? And so yes. that's where people come, you know. Yeah. Right. Instead of having the blow up uh, yeah. arguments that you see on TV all Non-violent the time. Nonviolent communication. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's just, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I think it's just naturally hard when you're having these conversations in a relationship you're like i love this person so much and i want them to think the world of me and they're supposed to so how can how can they still love me and i be doing something wrong i think that's initially where our minds go if you like haven't really done the work and know that any kind of healthy conversation isn't necessarily personal it's like no no i'm just voicing my needs because I'm hoping that you can meet them and it can make us stronger. And like, we have to be able to talk about it in order to get there. But like, I still love you. And this isn't a reflection on you. It's just like, you know, it's something, what do you, it's not personal. It's just an action. Like your actions Mm -hmm. are different than personal, you know? So Mm -hmm. I feel like trying to communicate that, but that takes two really open-minded individuals and who really love each other and who really want it to work. I would say not even necessarily love. I would say who really want it to work. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, and especially nowadays, it's like, I have this problem. I've had great sex in the past with other partners. I can just leave this person and go find someone else. And instead of have these hard conversations or difficult conversations with you know, my partner and work through it. It's almost easier to just move on. Sometimes. Yeah. A hundred percent. This, I said this on um, Lala's podcast. I was saying that it's for a lot of people, it's easy. The lie is easier than the truth. The truth is an extremely hard thing. And we succumb to like fi- cheating or just holding within and then blowing up. Or, I mean, there's a million things that we succumb to, but that's what the b- boil of it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes and sense. And I think, yeah, especially Natasha, you just kind of spoke about it too. It's like the sex is better, but for in our culture and I think in relationships in general, sex is still so taboo. We don't know how to talk about it in a healthy way to be like, this isn't you. Thank you, Mike. I see you getting nah. excited. It's like, it's something that we can talk about and make it better for one another because each person wants something different sexually. You have to unlearn your previous relationship and relearn it with your new partner. So you're both satisfied. You don't have to go somewhere else. But like me, too, I'm so afraid of talking about it, you know, because it's like you don't want to hurt your feelings. I don't know how to like make it in a genuine way. Like it's just nobody teaches you these things because nobody talks about sex. If if I may uh, respond to that. Yeah. I love that you said that 100 percent. That's a part of what feeling seen is all about. And right now, Joe, thank you for the, the kudos, homie. When you say I have my doing my videos, my videos absolutely suck right now because <laughs> They're not. No, they don't. Well, I, fi- I, fi- well, and, and, and for our listeners, Feeling Seen is your company that you're working on right now. And that's Correct. those are the segments you're putting on on Instagram. Yes. And okay. for the record, I have board certified sexologists already on my team. I have people that have been uh, mental health therapists for over 20 years on my team. So it's way more than myself. I'm trying yeah. to uh, get Columbia University uh, to be on my team as well. They're the number one sexologist. Uh, they have the number one sexology program in the world. So it's wow. not just me. It's way more people that are way more intelligent than I am. I'm just pulling forward with this. Well, I mean, I think myself. your videos are great. Why do you think they suck? Yeah, yeah so I that, think they're great too. I appreciate it. That's just because y'all the homies are, right? No, so, I told you that. I'm not a you homie. Did. I don't really know you. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. But you're you no, you an associate homie. Great. Yeah. <laughs> you're an associate homie. I ain't never said that before. <laughs> <laughs> associate homie, what's up? <laughs> I want to hug you now. I'm dead. But, um, this house so, is dying. Get back in here. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny though. That was funny though. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was... 
edited me out. Oh my god, it's so that funny. Was funny yeah. it's, 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 I wouldn't true, say true. if it wasn't true, honestly. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's oh true. man. That's but the good. content is not good um, simply because just because the quality of something is good, all that means is you got money to afford it, right? And what I'm what I'm truly saying is I need to do better. And like I know what the I know what my listeners that have you know given me a chance what they're asking for, and I need to speak to them. And so I'm probably going to change it to like me. Do, I can, I don't do makeup, right? But I can do like I can wash my face, do like a face wash, and then tell a story, and give like a response to it right there. I think that I, something like that is more better content in comparison to I feel like I'm doing it like the people that I admire on social media uh, who are normally more masculine aggressive individuals and so they come in they give me advice like that that's how I like it but I need to switch it up for my audience is all I'm saying I'm so you're saying the up. way you're saying you're not saying what you're saying you're saying no it's not what I'm saying it's how, I'm saying. It's how you're shooting it Correct. and you, the content you're Correct. yeah the way you deliver Correct. it okay but it's that's that's uh, it's so funny because you know I've been losing Friends of finding peace, hey. but <laughs> I'm sorry, Period. but it's true. Um, that I didn't even that just came out, but it's true, right? <laughs> and so people that are uh, associate homies per se, having you know unfollow me and things like this, and they're like not giving me a chance really. But it's funny, like we talk about like Steph Curry or something who can make all these shots, or Serena who can hit the tennis ball, right? Well, they had a good twenty years when the light wasn't on them. Mm-hmm. And now they got the light on them, right? And some of them fall, some of them rise to the occasion. Us, when we start to do things with this platform that we were beautifully blessed and given, when we start something, we're trying it with the lights on from day one. Yeah. Right. And that is a bit hard to do. I'm not making excuses for it because best believe, honey, I'm going to get it, honey, using your word. And mm-hmm. and yeah. so I think that's something that like people don't even realize. Like, you can talk shit about us. We just lost Twitch. Rest uh, in peace. You know, like... Yeah. That was, yeah, was terrible. Like, we're, we are shooting these shots like practicing in public and so like joe i appreciate what you said but me i also gotta know i gotta do better and so that's what i'm talking about but i do think that you can you know this is what i'll say for the people who are unfollowing you and don't care about the content that's being put out they might not care anyway right but also for from people like me and joe who are very different people in all in so many aspects right i also think your videos are great joe also thinks your videos are great and i think that it shows who you are you are a masculine man do you know what i mean like you are when i look at you no one looks at you and be like oh mike he's this he's no like i look at you as a strong masculine man and the way that you convey things i i listen to it you know i'll send you messages about the videos sometimes i disagree but it's invoking conversation and i think that's all i want Ha- mm-hmm. Exactly. Not everybody's going to agree with you. Not everybody's going to agree with me. Also, it's just, it I is think, what it is. I think there's a mm-hmm. fine line of, like, I think you should um, cater to what your audience wants because they're following you. Well, they're you know, you should audience. cater, but you should also not lose yourself in the mix of that. Like, oh, you, sure. should, so you still should be putting out content that you also feel good about. Yep. So I, I think you need to find that mixture, and I mean, I like I said, I personally like your video and, and just like not even what you're saying, the quality and, and how you're shooting. I like that as well. Like that's my cool. kind of vibe. But yeah, yeah like I, I, but I get what you're saying. I yeah, yeah. I think this is like maybe an adjacent topic, but also because this is is this pretty new for you? You'd say oh yeah, it's brand new. So well, then, well, the content like starting to like tell people the what I care out. about. You know, yeah, right. putting the content out, yeah. And like it is, like we just said, it's a little bit more of a taboo, controversial subject, which I think naturally some people kind of are like, e. That's um, what I wanted to speak to. And you're yeah. absolutely right, hundred percent right. I feel like I'm kind of experiencing something similar. So I think a lot of people like go through after their big platform, after their recent season of Bachelor, Bachelor, Bachelor in Paradise, you get a ton of people who like want to follow you and then naturally drop off. I feel mm-hmm. like people on Instagram and TikTok are learning more of my personality and sometimes they don't like it and they think Correct. that I've changed. They're like, oh, you're getting way too big for your bitches. It's like, oh no, you just never knew this side of me. 100%. But I'd rather like establish my loyal people now and right. be like, oh, it sucks to see you go. Some of both definitely like learn how I can still stay true to myself and do what's best for my audience. Correct. But it's a, it's a ulti- balance, yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, like want to be true to me because I don't always want to have to be someone I'm not. And I've I've learned that comes more with like the controversial subjects. Like if I post something about um, 
aesthetics or facial care, I'll lose a ton of followers. It's well, like it's kind of crazy just because they don't they don't want to see they that stuff they or really. they think yeah I think that I'm like fake, um, uh, but right. not really it's, giving me a chance. So it's interesting to I guess gather data on yourself while building a new kind of platform. And that's what I it is. That's I mean, what you're going through. That's exactly what I'm talking about. We have no, I haven't heard this conversation right in our be uh, bachelor nation world, but Gabby, yeah. to what you're saying, completely agree with you that. For instance, I'm talking about sex and intimacy and wellness and education. 100% of people mm-hmm. have know something about it. Either they've done it yeah. or they know someone knows someone that has done it, right? Or they know that mm-hmm. it exists out there and they know that's how they were created. And so yeah. it's not that necessarily the subject is bad. It's people want to, you know, that's one of those things that's still taboo. And we want to know about it, but we want to know about it in the way that nurtures us right. and no one else sees that we're like consuming. And so that's yeah. just the line that I have to work with. And I, I, I love all the people that, you know, unfollow us, like salute to you. I'm not catering mm-hmm. to you, but like you said, Joe, I mean, at the end of the day, and you say, Gab, I have to do what's best for my heart and what's best for me. You yeah, do. you do. You do. Yeah. And where I think, you know, for me, I'm always reading this, doing this. I'm, I feel like I'm always trying to grow. So with growth comes change. Correct. So I can't be the you know I can't be the person who's only posting let's say you started with posting facial stuff or uh, facial mm-hmm. products or it's beauty products up. and now it's like okay now I'm a fashion girly okay now I'm a bad bitch mm-hmm. okay now I'm a, <laughs> you know what I mean like you yeah. gotta you know now I'm in my well, relationship first now off, I'm not single you're anymore a bad now, bitch. come on now yeah period yeah. period, yeah. period, yeah. period. Yeah. um but <laughs> Bad but, bitch o'clock. Bad <laughs> bitch o'clock. <laughs> Joe knows what's Not up. That um, <laughs> no, Sometimes but, I hate myself. See? Just, <laughs> no, it's hilarious. It's so it was good. good. Bad bitch o'clock. I'm going to use it. Wh- it's when Joe texts me and he goes, yes. The Y A S S S S. Yes, Rob right. never takes it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's to make fun of me because he knows well, I always she'll do be that. Like, you want to get brunch, and then I'll hit her with a yay, yeah. a y, yeah. a s s s s s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, so, it's so it's so all yeah, about so, building a, a community, not necessarily an audience. And so and a lot I think of us we gain audiences, not communities. But the ba- but the your community wants to see you grow. They do. They do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Your community Absolutely. wants to see you happy and your community wants to see you doing something that fills you. And that's just period. If, if I, I love that. If I can, I saw a, a screenshot. It made me smile. It was like this maybe 60 plus year old uh, lady who uh, re- reshared my joint. And she was like, uh, I know I'm not his target audience, but I love Big Mike and I, uh, I'm going to learn from him. And I'm gonna grow with them. It just made See? I screenshot it. Like it just See? made me happy. <laughs> See, it's really yeah. great. It really is. And like nah, people, gonna be way better. You know, it's like it's so easy to get caught up on the negative, but like there is so much positive. And when you see that one woman saying that, you're like, wow, like even if no one else messed with it, she messes with it. And like that's one person who you may have Rex. changed or made a thought, think, think about something, you know? 100%. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you could right. be like on the forefront of things and kind of a pioneer in Bachelor Nation. Like I know our audience is pretty specific and we don't really talk about like sex a lot, but maybe you could change that for people like behind you. Cause there are some people who do, you know, really great things with it and are really successful. Like whatever, like call her daddy. Like that's their whole platform. And they kind of grew an audience to where they love the way they talk about it. So it's kind Correct. of like it's the way that it's talked about. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I think you're doing great things, and I wish that we were all more comfortable talking about sex because it's a huge part of a relationship, and you can just like it's like personal growth, growing with your partner. It all leads to great things. Yeah, mm-hmm. I had a uh, my homegirl Shan Boudram. She hit me up, and we uh, I did a podcast with her, and it did extremely good. It was about uh, male performance anxiety. And so, yes. like, this is what we talk about, but you know, people are scared. It's all she's, good. Well, she's well, really great, of, and her of audience isn't afraid of it. Speaking of male performance, Mike, um, you know, Where you're is... out there. You're out there, <laughs> Joe. Where is he going <laughs> you're with this? You're, you're out there in Austin. What's what's um, you know? I haven't I haven't spoke oh. to you in a minute. Are you single? Are oh, you dating I'm anyone? Like, was he about to say what's the male performance like in Austin? <laughs> no, no, I know, I know where his My ass went. I know exactly like, oh, where he was like, going. Do you not date? Like, what are we scared of? I'll but. tell you, like, Joe, when you and your wife you come down to Austin, you owe me two drinks for that damn question. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Whoop your ass. <laughs> so um, I take that as you are dating someone. Absolutely. 
You are? Okay. Yeah. What's her name? I won't say that. Mike, come on. Uh, tell me your name, Mike. I'll say uh, I'm 100. I, I don't know if I told you her name offline. Yeah. No. Okay. How, okay. How okay. you guys meet? Are you I know her name. Uh, <laughs> we met. My homie actually tried to holler at her. I stay home most of the time. And she was out and he was out. He tried to holler at her. Then she stood up and he was like, yeah. She too tall for me. And then, <laughs> but she said that he was a really nice guy. And she gave him her IG or whatever uh, to give to me. And then I slid in the DMs. Nice. Okay, wait. Mm. Okay, wait. Okay, wait. Okay, wait. So she's tall. We know how, that. How how <laughs> tall is he? This is so wild to me. How tall yeah. is he? Actually, he's the homie that even got me on the show. That's my homie. But uh, That's your homie. And he and doesn't take tall. He doesn't date tall women. No, no, no. He loves tall women. I swear, she, God, does, she doesn't want to women. date him. Yeah, it was the other way. Yeah. Uh, most of my male homies that are not tall, they they'll definitely love a tall woman. But most of my homegirls, they see. ain't doing no short guys. I see, I see. Yeah, so, that makes so more then, sense. So then she was like, "But <laughs> yeah. you know, you cool. Yeah. But what's up with your friend Mike?" And then he, and then he's nah, like, "Oh, he my- actually, no, nah, I can't even do it like that. He actually uh, hyped me up. He was a, definitely a great hype man. He was like, "You just came back from over over this from this place. I just came from this place. I was in Mexico and Colombia, you know." Mm-hmm. It was a lot of connections, and so he just set that up for me. He threw the alley, and of course, I'm a dunk it. So All right. into her DMs. <laughs> wow. Okay. You. Love how it. long you have got... you guys? Go how ahead, long Bimmy. have you guys been seeing each other? Um, I can't believe Build I'm talking the to y'all stuff. Come like on. Um, <laughs> Let us know, Mike. Let us We've been Let's talking know. for like six, and been. Um, uh, and been like exclusive for like almost two two, well, two nice. years more, six more months more two, two months two, two months, months? yeah nice. been more? in the works for like six months you guys are yeah. basically married what are you gonna tell us your name <laughs> <laughs> nah nah are, nah, are, are, nah. Are, okay. you, are you celebrating the holidays together that's a beautiful question uh so my birthday two days after christmas uh-huh. i'll be uh, you know i'm gonna be at home my mom it's like i'm gonna be at home my mom for christmas Mm-hmm. Uh, but I guess I avoided that question. I'm not going to go back to it. And <laughs> probably for my birthday and New Year's, definitely for sure together. Okay. Okay. Aww, okay. Okay. Cute. We love this for you. Um, <laughs> do you not share her or want to share her because of past relationships, because of the bachelor world? What is it? This is, a com- I mean, of course, a, t- t- a topic of conversation that we all have. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we all talk about it. all four of us talk about this offline. Uh, mm-hmm. Gabby, we haven't yet together, yeah, like, but individually <laughs> in our groups. But Gabby, y'all about to be homies. Y'all about to be homies after this podcast. <laughs> like, like, Gabby gonna be like, "Well, we haven't, Mike. I'm like, well, no shit, yeah, but you still like, go through yeah. it." Not me again. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel out of the loop. No, we about to be in the loop. We about to be in the loop. But um. Uh, no, nah, it's just I've, I mean I've dated post show and no one knew about it because yeah. I wouldn't have even allowed that question. I would have been like next question, <laughs> but um, I it's almost like damn if you do, damn if you don't in this situation. You can't, can't people just can't be happy. Like damn, yeah. Like if I decide to share something so personal to me, like I, I would just say this. This is where my little where I grew up come out. Like, you ain't gonna say none of that craziness in person. Not around my girl or something like that. I would just have a conversation with that individual. But online, people can say things and mm-hmm. I want to protect her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see. Yeah. Well, but I mean, no, at the same time, it's definitely gonna happen. Like, right. I'm, I'm yeah. happy. Of course. So, you know, of course. I, it's, it's gonna yeah. happen, but you know, of I'm, course. it's not on no one's dime. But then you're also, happy. I personally- you're also, you're also happy. Okay, so she's tall and you're happy. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna figure this out. So. <laughs> <laughs> I won't slip um, up more than that. <laughs> and we're gonna assume she's not a bachelor person. <laughs> I mean, I know the answer to this already. Oh, <laughs> is she? Is she from Bachelor Nation? Maybe. All right. I don't want to. I'm not even gonna go the there. The plot thickens. How about what? this? How about um? You know, speaking of like just like being in public relationships, and our lives are so public, especially coming off the show. Um, do you give advice to any of like the new guys um, that come off? Do people reach out to you? Any mentoring there? Yeah, two things. One, that's probably why I don't live in like the hot bed cities or bachelor nation. Like, yeah, hundred. Well, two reasons. One because taxes, but then two because like if you live in L.A., New York, Chicago, uh, Nashville, 
you feel me? Like what are those like four number hot number spots, hot spots? San Diego, you gonna be seen, you know? And it's just other stuff you gotta deal with. But I live in Austin. Like and I I mean I be with my girl and like people be taking pictures and it's no big deal to me. I don't it's not about secretive, it's just you know, private. Yeah. Um Hey, and so t- you know, there's nothing wrong with New York, all right? No, nothing's wrong with it whatsoever. I actually would love to live there one day. That's just when I got stupid money, though, because I'm going to live a certain lifestyle. But <laughs> uh, to what you said, Joe, it's crazy because I remember I hit up, actually, full circle moment. Gabby, do you want to feel in a circle? I do. Tell oh, my me. God. This is going to be so <laughs> for me and you right here. Yeah. The oh person God. that this is a full circle moment because it's like a triple full circle moment. Because mm-hmm. the first person I hit up, Joe, for advice was Dean. Dad. Okay? Not that. that is good. She said dead. Full <laughs> <laughs> circle. That shit is crazy. It just yeah. came like that. But uh, not nah, to Joe, the other part. Yeah, people definitely hit me up now. And I absolutely. Wait, I don't get it. I, Gabby I, dated yeah. Dean for a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I was like, well, why is that a full? Okay. Yeah, this was okay. a long time ago. Like, okay. Long, okay. long, long, long time ago. Okay. The only okay. reason I okay. said okay. that, Gabby, publicly, because mm-hmm. it was about said it. on. Yeah. But yeah, Joe, people ask, people reach out, and it feels amazing. It feels. I never went to college, right? So it, it's like I'm in a fraternity or something now. It feels really cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you what give advice? Do you, yeah, do what you advice give, um, do you give? I mean, I just hit Rodney up today. Me and Rodney talked for a little bit. It's completely, it, it depends on everything. I could be talking to you, Gabby, you, Joe, you, Tasha, like it, anything. It just depends. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. okay. I like Rodney. Rodney, Rodney needs. Rodney needs a lot of advice. Like, boy. No, Rodney, Rodney is winning. Like, <laughs> Rodney no, needs joking. a lot of advice. Uh, I'm joking. I, I, I love Rodney. Rod, Rodney is somebody that Who's genuinely winning. makes me laugh every time I talk to him. Yeah, mm. facts, facts, facts. He is very funny. Um, all right, Mike. We want to play a game with you. Uh, before we do, do you want to let us in on like who you're dating, her name? <laughs> or... <laughs> No, Joe, stop. Okay. Joe. All right, let's play a game. Let's play a game. <laughs> okay. Come on, Joe. I'm play. just saying. Like, you, you got to come harder than that. You got to, like, loop it up or something. I like, I, I honestly, you got to cross me over to give me loop and twist in the words. I almost had you there. <laughs> I like, did you a favor. <laughs> that, I would have worked like, on me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, he's being so sweet about it. I'll tell him. Like, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. like, this seems like a good time. <laughs> I'm like, come on now. I'm, I'm going to need Jordan Peterson to try to give me an answer to that question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're doing rapid fire. All right. So you just have to say the first thing that comes to mind. It can be one thing, multiple things, but try not to think too hard about it. Uh, we love your takes, you and Brian's takes on talking it out. So out let's home. get some dating and relationship hot takes from Hugh. Number Ready? one, your girlfriend's name. Go <laughs> rapid fire. <laughs> um, I was going to tell you what her name means in another language. Oh. Uh-oh. Okay, tell us that. Yeah. No, because then that narrows I'm it down. The, I'm like recording it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Uh, no. her name means, and then we're going to put it in every language. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Stop playing with us, Mike. Look, stop playing with us. Either tell us to don't, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, first one, you ready? Yeah. What are your go to strategies for dating apps if you were giving advice to someone? Uh, get to know yourself first. First and foremost, stop trying to be uh, like everybody else. Mm, okay. Going out on a first date, where do you go? Uh, first off, make sure you got good hygiene. <laughs> Let's start there. Okay. But where should someone take someone on a first date? Um, I mean, if you met them on a dating app, I would say definitely look at their profile and see what they like and do something around that. Okay. Good advice. Great advice. Who pays on a first date? The man. Okay. Uh, I was going to ask a follow up, but I'm not. Okay. Please do. Um, Because if the woman wants to pay, then we can go half for sure. If you, what if you are not interested in the person? Do you still pay or do you split these? 100% still pay. Still pay. Still pay. Okay. Mm -hmm. A bunch of gentlemen. No, that's like kind of, you an asshole, asshole, like times two of you. Like, bro, come on. You got to be paying. I was going to, I was going to actually pick this up, but I'm just not that into you. So (laughs) you are super (laughs) asshole. No, no, (laughs) no, you don't say that, but it's just like, that's what you're saying without saying it. No, no, no. For for instance, I'll say this. If I, if I'm not like on a first date, regardless, I always like, reach for my purse always offer and that's the guy, all i be asking for give me the alligator arm 
Yeah, yeah. I'm, like, I'm never T-Rex. just like. I'm never just like. T Rex. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, you know, I always offer, and if the guy's like, no, 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 in my mind, I'm almost like, yeah, we're definitely gonna hang out again, or if not, I'm kind. Of, sometimes I insist because I know I'm not gonna talk to them no more. I'm be like, no, 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 it's okay. Let's just, let's see. It's fine. I have an Amex too. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> Anyways, okay, sorry. Um, all right. Best advice for couples who need to reignite the spark in their relationship. Um, do a yes, no, maybe list on feelingseen.com. Mm. What is that? That's a, it's like a, a yes, no, maybe stock list that uh, it just gets you truly in tune to your person. Mm, okay. Mm. Love mm. that. Uh, kissing or more on a first date? Mm. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to touch those lips. Nothing's off of the bad. table on the first date. Okay. Um, I changed it out. It was at first. It was not. I remember when I went on the show, I answered that question. I said, nah. <laughs> but yeah, I changed that ideology. I feel like okay. a make out is like a handshake these days. Like, it's a good <laughs> oh, thing. You yeah. said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> damn. It's no, more than yeah. that to me, but okay. <laughs> I mean, let's get it over with. Right. See if it's compatible. I mean, you were the bachelorette, so I guess it's it's in it. It's in his kiss. Yeah. That's uh, where it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. I really need to know what you what you think about this. On and off relationships, can they work? No. Oh. I mean, it de- it depends there's on. There's an you, exception to every rule. Yeah, there's an exception if you don't want to be together. Of the time, no. If That's you like genuinely want your space, then absolutely. But like, if mm. your goal is to be married, not X Y Z, no. Mm. Okay. But it can be a How? relationship, and like y'all keep it separate for sure. Okay. How soon is too soon to talk about finances with your significant other? It's not too soon. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. Ah, uh, love that. Mm-hmm. What is the best way to make a good impression on your significant other's family? Nowadays, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny for a lot of reasons. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, dropping yeah, hits, like, Mike. Oh, dropping hits. Meet in the film. <laughs> <laughs> um. Be cordial. Don't be uh, doing too much. Be a gentleman, or be a what is the what is the opposite of gentleman? Ladylike. What is the opposite of gentleman? Wow. What is what? Well, hmm, Gabby, what would you say? I think. Um, Dang, I never thought of it. Um, I think cordial is a good one, or like amicable. Amicable. Is, yeah, I'm looking like, for an, another word that congenial. Congenial. Maybe that. I'm like. Just like <laughs> easy to talk to and like start conversation. Dainty. I feel- be a dainty, dainty little yeah. flower. No, 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 I don't think you necessarily have to yeah, be dainty, be but I think I think you no. should be light. I think you yeah, should be just, light. But be I, light. Light. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Light. Yeah, I like you should be light. Watching you, I think that you you met the fam well. You know, you were yourself. You were light. You weren't like doing too much. You wasn't aggressive. You know, it's chill. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but also act like you're interested. Oh, like I've yeah, been in the sorry. opposite where it's like the other person did felt like they weren't interested in my family at all. It's like, oh no, this is kind of like That's you know, you do have to earn their affection. Yeah, and like win them over. Yeah, yeah, and red I flag. think, but but I, it's one thing to come somewhere and and think that they're supposed to impress you. And I think that's where the lightness comes from. And the same thing with like being a gentleman, it's like being thoughtful, right? I think both parties- Don't show up empty handed. Both, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Yeah. Bottle of wine. Okay, last last one, Mike. You're so Italian, I love it. (laughs) What's the best romantic gift you can give without breaking the bank? Uh, uh, You can give romantic gifts with spending zero dollars. It's a it's not about the monetary value. It's always about like paying attention to little things. I've said this before, um, and I'm speaking from like just my tonality because uh, this stuff is important to me. Which is just simply like when people talk, when your person, your significant other talks, you're not going to remember every single thing. I personally think it's intelligent to have like a little Evernote or a little in your little notes app. Oh, they said this. That was that was hella sweet, right? And then like you can get that individual some of their favorite things, and it's like the fact that you actually care. And it could be if it, if it doubles as something that's caring and like useful, yeah, winning. Like what? Can you give us a give us something specific? Give All the things that come to my mind right now are things that 
I may have bought and the person that I may have bought them for is probably listening to this car right now, so I can't say. But how would we know? How would they know? I mean, well, they would know, huh? They would know because it's... Okay, well, I'll say this. <laughs> since, the, since the holidays and everything and, like, it's gift-giving time and everybody, I will say for me, I mean, flowers can be very expensive, but sometimes they're not. And flowers, I think... That's the first I thing I thought of, too. Flowers Sweet. are, like, amazing. It's just it's something that doesn't break the bank, and it's a really sweet gift, and I think every woman loves but a, I think that thoughtful flower. That's cool, but like that's so 2008. Like I think the way that you would do it if you want to give somebody some flowers is like let's say they what's your favorite flowers and the favorite flowers and favorite colors. I love um I love lilies. I love lilies, lilies. in any color. But any I love color, lilies. right? I so like let's some say they flowers you, if anyone's listening. Sunflowers, sunflowers, which is the the yellow with the brown on the inside, right? Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. So yep. For both of y'all, right? So, Gabby, let's say this is, I was about to say, let's say you're my girl first. That would be just terrible. Don't cheat. Don't do it. But let's say, Gabby, you're my girl, for example, right? I give you. Let's your say sunflowers. you were on the Bachelorette. How about that? Oh, I, <laughs> I give yeah. you. I give you your sunflowers, but I do some origami, and I make a few origami sunflowers as well, and I write like a poem inside of the flower. So if you were uh, to ever unravel the origami, you can see the whole thing. It's a multi-tier thing. Oh my oh, God! See, that's so that sweet. is sweet. That is sweet. That is sweet. Love that. I will say okay. I'm I'm big on handwritten notes too. Like if I don't have like anything around, just leaving I'll make anything out of a sheet of paper, like a receipt, an envelope, anything in the car, leave a note. I feel like it goes so far because it's unexpected and you can keep it. And yeah. it's free. It's mm -hmm. Yeah. Joe, what do you think? Give some give the people some um give some give the people some inspiration. Roman Sundays food. with Joe pasta sauce is actually hey, not there expensive. You go, boy. There you go, pasta boy. itself is cheap. There uh, you go, boy. I, 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 I also I like um, yeah I think anything with just you know just put put thought into it like I, even just like you know we go for a romantic stroll in Central Park or something you know just yep. something nice that you don't you don't have to there's so many things like Mike said that you don't have to spend money on that means so much but to the fellas listen bro if you got some money you better spend a little coin on me like period don't be out here yeah. cheap bro like don't be out like i'm just being 100 about the situation right like and i no. go, go for the girls too like hey now don't be, don't be driving bentley's and you you buy me like a walmart gift receipt for ten dollars I just <laughs> think I just think that um, what Joe said. It's like uh, get your girl a cooking lesson <laughs> with Sundays with Joe. Right, that would be hard to me. I ain't going front. I might buy it just just because that's the home. You know what I mean? Yeah. There you go. Uh, All right, Mike. Screaming, screaming. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. It was great talking to you. Yeah. Invite it whenever you want. Thank you so much, Mike. This was great. Right. I appreciate yep. it. Sir. Love Thanks, having you Mike. on. Right. And happy holidays. Happy holidays. Gabby. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah cool. Gabby, you're officially the homie now. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I honestly I feel so seen and included. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling seen dot com. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Plug, please. <laughs> oh my god, you know who it is. Yeah, you I, know Natasha? I do know. Nice, nice. I do know. They're real cute, too. They're real cute. Nice. Aww. I'm happy for them. I know how to keep secrets, guys. I'm sorry. I'm a really great secret keeper. If someone tells me to keep a secret, if someone yeah. doesn't tell me to keep the secret, I slip all the time. I'm like, That's oh, That's the trick. <laughs> Same. Me too. You have to you say it. Me, yeah, I'll take it to the grave. I'll be like, forget about it. Like, tell yep. me yeah. stop, but... Wait, what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. <laughs> okay. Um, That was great, guys. Yeah. Okay. Thank well, you so much, Gabby, for coming yes. oh my God. and hanging this with us. This has been so fun. Quick, uh, quick heads up to all our listeners. Uh, no new episode next week. We'll be back the week after. We're taking um, that week off. Um, and Gabby, thank you so much for coming on and co-hosting. You, you guys, were awesome. And honestly, have so much fun on the tour. Crush it. I really think you're gonna love it because it's so much fun. Dancing with the Stars tour. Thank you. Yes, yeah. you're gonna freaking crush. Wait, are you guys coming to New York? We should go. We should go. We should I, go. I know, they do I Radio City, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, yeah, you guys go. should go. Yeah, yeah I will go. That'll I'm down. Fun. Yeah, thank you to all the listeners, and thank you to Mike, and thank you to you guys. It's been so much fun, and you guys are so welcoming. So I hope you'll have me back. Yes! Of course, of course. We can't wait to have you back. And 
as always, make sure to subscribe and submit all your burning questions. Follow us at ClickbaitBN on Instagram. All the links, all our socials are there. I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday. And also, if you are single or you know someone who is single, go to our website to nominate or apply at BachelorNation.com slash apply. And share your stories with us. We want to know what clickbait you're looking at this week. And Prime members, make sure to listen to clickbait ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today, or you can listen ad-free with Wondering Plus in Apple Podcasts. But before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com slash survey. Happy holidays, happy new year, and new year, new beginnings. Let's go. See you next year. Bye. Yay. Yay.